Hi, so we are the Network Visualization Group for OER Africa, and we are working for Kathleen there. Um, these are a couple of the questions that we were given yesterday when we started um, working on this project. Um, so OER Africa is an organization which has, um, which conducts a bunch of conferences and uh, other events in the US as well as Africa. And they wanted to know, in the network of people who participate in these events, uh, how do these participants interact with each other? Which are the events that some participants go to in common? And who is interacting with whom in these events? And for what purpose do they do that? Um, so in short, I guess they wanted to uh, link groups of people to events that they are participating in. Now, a, a fairly fundamental question is, like, what, what sort of use would this be? Why, why would you actually want to, um, why do you want any sort of grouping like this? So an example that I thought of from my personal experience is something like this. Um, this is the fifth Solway conference on electrons and photons that took place in 1937. And something like 17 of the people who participated here went on to win Nobel Prizes and had significant impacts in the fields of physics and chemistry. So if you could actually trace um, the stuff that they uh, later went on to develop, you might find this conference to be a, start, a fundamental starting point in the development of these um, theories. So now in order to sort of see whether we can do something like that in our project, uh, we've been given some data. Uh, we have data about events, which uh, gives you the, a, a unique event name for each event, a time when that event took place, a location, and other sorts of data about whether it was a teleconference call, uh, whether it took place in a university or something like that. And uh, data we have about the people includes uh, a unique contact ID for each person, uh, the employer of which organization they are employed by, and the gender of that person, and uh, other kinds of fields that identify them. Uh, so, one of our goals is basically to show how different pairs of participants are connected by events that they both attended. Uh, a, so, what sort of questions can be answered by drawing these sort of connections between participants. Uh, so I talked to Kathleen and she said that this could help us identify whether, whether people who participate in the same events have similar roles that they play in different, possibly different organizations, or maybe they attend the same events because they simply happen to be in the same location, or whether people who belong to a common employer keep attending the same sort of events. So we have not completely finished or done very significant work towards making this linking, but the work that we have done so far will help in doing this. And uh, in our second goal is focuses on the main events themselves. So it's sort of a reversal of the previous uh, paradigm, and uh, we aim to show how different events are connected by common attendees. So. Some of the questions we hope to answer with that is uh, in, in a given series of events, for example, uh, the organization uh, conducts events known as an OER tech call. So we could, by looking at our graphs, we could see whether um, the attendance for these events is constant or increasing or whether people are you know, sort of dropping off over time. Also, uh, there are annual events to for people to participate in who uh, have been leaders at some of the annual, uh, some of the events that took place that year. So events like this should technically show up as hubs where all the leaders from your various events <coughs> congregated in a given year. So uh, now I guess uh, Jen will talk about how we go to this <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I knew I was going to do this. Um, 
So we, uh, we started out by using R to do the join, which is a little weird, I'm sure, to most of you who are used to database type joining, which I am too, but hey, R worked quite well. Didn't have to do much to our CSV tables. Uh, we all had it. It was very clean. Uh, we found a nifty little program called text to Pyac that took our CSV file um, of two columns and converted it into um, a .NET file, which is what this other program, Pyac, uh, uses. So we then imported it into Pyac and created our first um, graphs. Can we then use the tools Gephi and Guess for visualization? We, we struggled a little with Guess. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with it, but um, we, that's probably where we'll go in the future because um, it has more rich attribute features um, than, than um, for example, I All of these tools are freely available to um, anyone who's interested. So this is what the um, graph looks like for both events and people all together. So um, the size of the node is the number of connections, so you can see the very big events and the people around them. Um, what we then did using Kayak is to fold the two-mode graph into a one-mode graph. So now we see all of the events that are connected by people. And what the coloring here signifies is we ran a, what's called a modularity algorithm um, and let the computer sort of decide what kind of classes these events fall into. So the colors are meant to give an indication of, of clustering or grouping of events based on their connections. Um, again, the size of the node is just the number of connections. So you can see the bigger events versus the smaller events. For example, um, up here in the corner, um, those are the thick lines and the smaller dots. That's an event which had two workshops. So you can see how that kind of goes up. And then we, here we have a graph showing all of the people. And the interesting thing here is um, that the size of the node is based on something called betweenness, which is another algorithm that we ran. And betweenness gives you an idea of the importance of a person, or the importance of a node to the graph. So we found person number 324, who is apparently one of the PIs. So <laughs> uh, it makes total sense that he comes out in PG's, sorry, I don't know, um, comes out to be quite important in this network of people. And we just, we asked Kathleen a few questions about what some of the clusterings are. Um, and here the colors are just, is again, from the modularity algorithm, but what it basically does is reflect the different events, the, the different colors correspond to the different events. Um, so, for example, that's a big cluster of human contact at the University of Illinois from an event that happened here. Anybody have any questions about the graph? Amazing. Sorry, just checking. Um, what is a PI? Oh, Principal Investigator. Oh, right. <laughs> so one of the top academics on the project. 